السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح هيا على الفلاح الله الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله تفرد بالربوبية وأبان للإنسانية دلائل الألوهية أحمده تعالى وأشكره على ما أسدى من منة وعطية ودفع من نقمة وبلية وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أنقذنا بالبعثة المحمدية من براثن الإشراك والوثنية وأعزنا بالتوحيد وأبطل مسالك الجاهلية وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدًا عبد الله ورسوله خير البرية وسيد البشرية صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين أشادوا صروح الحنيفية وأعلوا منار الملة المصطفوية والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما My dear brothers and sisters, as we near the end of the year 1443 of the Hijrah, we reflect on the reality of the passing of time. Remember that yesterday will never come back. 
Remember that today will not last. And remember that tomorrow is not promised. So we must take lessons from our past. We must act today and we must prepare for tomorrow. The life of this dunya is short no matter how long you live and every one of us will leave this dunya sooner or later. So, so if your today is not better than your yesterday, then surely you have missed out. And anyone who is not constantly improving as time goes by is at a loss. My dear brothers and sisters, great actions done during a person's life on this earth is what will leave you a good legacy after your death. A good legacy keeps a person alive even after his death. His body may leave this world, but the good that he has done is remembered and it remains. And the benefit that he brought to the people by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stays upon this earth long after the person is gone. And there are many examples like this in history. Look for example at the four Imams of Fiqh, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Rahimahumullahu Jami'an. These Imams, they lived their lives and they left this world. But their legacy and their reputation and the benefit that came to the people through their work lives on until today. And dua is still made for them centuries later. You don't mention the name of any of these people except that afterwards you always say Rahmatullahi alayhi or Rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy upon this person. So they are remembered by the people with love and honor long after they left this dunya. So your reputation and the legacy that you leave behind is something that's very important that you must carefully build during the limited time you have upon this earth. You have a chance to build a legacy while you're here on this earth. But once you leave this earth, you cannot build anything anymore. So we have to take advantage of this opportunity and this limited time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. You want to be remembered in a good way so that people will continue to make dua for you. They will continue to pray for you. And if you do this, you will be remembered inshallah with honor and with dua and with the people asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon you. And this is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He allows us to leave behind people who will continue to pray for us and that prayer will benefit us while we are in our graves. So having a good reputation, it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being mentioned amongst the Muslims as a person who is known for good even after you leave this world, when people remember you, they remember the good that you did in this world. They remember the benefit that you brought to the people. This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a sign that this person inshallah has been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the, the people continue to praise him even after he dies. There's a narration. During the time from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, marru bi janazah fa'athnaw alayha khayra. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وجبت ثم مروا بأخرى فأثنوا عليها شرا فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وجبت فقال عمر وما وجبت يا رسول الله يا رسول الله فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا أثنيتم عليه خيرا فوجبت له الجنة وهذا أثنيتم عليه شرا فوجبت له النار that they passed by the Prophet ﷺ. Some people were carrying a, a funeral procession. A person had died and his janazah was being carried along. And as his janazah passed, the people started praising that person who had passed away. This was a righteous person. This person did so and so good acts in his life. This person was a person who brought benefit to other people. They praised this person for his goodness. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Wajabat, it has become obligatory for him. Then after some time, another janazah procession passed by and the people, they dispraised this person. They said, this was a bad person. He used to do such and such. They mentioned some bad things that he used to do in this world. 
And then the Prophet ﷺ also said wajabat, it has become obligatory for him. So then Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, hearing this, he asked the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulallah, wa ma wajabat, what has become obligatory? And then the Prophet ﷺ explained about the first person that you praised, that you talked about the good things that he used to do, Jannah has become obligatory upon this person. And as for the second person whom you dispraised and you mentioned the bad things about him and he was known for evil in this world, the fire of Jahannam has become obligatory on this person. Right? So leaving a good mark, leaving a good legacy, having a good reputation, it's something that's vital for a believer. And the praise will remain for a righteous person who benefited the people after he dies. And you will find everyone who has built a good reputation in this world and who has left a good legacy, you will see that they have benefited other people in some way. Otherwise, they would not be remembered. If a person was good only for himself and he stayed isolated and he lived a good life but he did not spread benefit to other people, then this person will generally not be remembered. But as for a person who does good and makes sure that that good touches everyone around him, then this person's loss will be felt. When this person is gone, the people will feel the heaviness of that loss. And they will remember that person in a good way and they will make dua for that person. So it's not enough just to be good only for yourself, but you have to make sure that the good you do is something that spreads to other people as well. And there are many means for doing this. There are many ways that a person of righteousness can spread righteousness amongst the people. Perhaps a person has been blessed with wealth. So that person is generous in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gives charity. And that charity benefits the people. This is a means of leaving a good legacy. That the sadaqah that you have left behind even after you physically leave this world the charity that you did in this world will continue to benefit the people. This is one way of leaving a good legacy. If someone has not been blessed with wealth, but perhaps has been given knowledge, and this person spreads this knowledge to others, he teaches other people the religion of Allah, he teaches others the Qur'an. And even after he leaves this world, the people who learn from him will continue to benefit from his teachings. This is one means of leaving a good legacy. Perhaps there is a righteous ruler, a righteous leader who leaves behind a legacy of justice with his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, bless, he blesses different people with different types of gifts. You may, be, you may have been given something that I have not been given. I may have been given something that you have not been given. It's the responsibility of every person to find the special gifts and talents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him and everyone has them. But you have to search for those gifts, find those gifts and then utilize those gifts in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that brings benefit to the people by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by doing this, you will maximize the good that you bring into this world and leaving a good legacy and being remembered fondly after you pass away, this is really a great gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, it's a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, it's a fruit of your good actions that you did during the limited time that you had upon this earth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الْخَيْرِ عَسَّلَهَ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for a slave of his, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sweetens this person. So then the companions, they asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا عَسَّلَهُ What does it mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sweetens a person? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained what he meant. He said, فَتَحَ لَهُ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ مَوْتِهِ حَتَّى يَرْضَى عَنْهُ مَنْ حَوْلَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the door for this person to do good actions when he is close to death. This person before he dies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this person the opportunity and the tawfiq and he opens the doors for this person to do a lot of good before he dies. And then the people who were, who were around him, the people who surrounded him, they will be pleased with him. 
This person leaves this world in a way that those who are around him are pleased with him. They were happy with him. And they will continue to remember him, inshallah, even after he leaves this world. My dear brothers and sisters, the greatest of men, the prophets of Allah, they gave great importance to protecting their reputations and leaving behind a good legacy. And the reputation that you have in this world is connected to the legacy that you will leave behind after you leave this world. If a person does not have a good reputation in this world, then that person won't leave behind a good legacy because the people will not think good of this person. But if a person has a good reputation in this world, then even after he leaves this world, he will leave behind a good legacy because the people will remember him with good. So your reputation while you're alive in this world and the legacy that you leave after you depart this world, these two things are connected and they cannot be separated. So it's very important if you want to leave behind a good legacy that you must make sure that you protect your reputation in this world. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From his dua, he said, وَجَعَلْ لِي لِسَانَ صِدْقٍ فِي الْآخِرِينَ O oh Allah, let, be, let me be mentioned with good on the tongues of others. He made dua that when he leaves this world, he is remembered in a good way by the people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted this dua for Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Ibrahim alayhi salam and gave him a great legacy. And that legacy continued through his progeny. All of the prophets that came after Ibrahim alayhi salam came from the lineage of Ibrahim alayhi salam up to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam who came from the lineage of Ismail ibn Ibrahim alayhi salam. And of course, my brothers and sisters, the greatest legacy that has ever been left by any person is the legacy of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest man who ever walked upon this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, praising his character, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And surely you have a great character. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ And surely we have elevated your remembrance. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is remembered and he is mentioned always in a good way. Even when we say his name, we follow it by saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May the peace and blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala be upon him. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala honored our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by making him the greatest of mankind, rather the greatest of all creation. And even though now more than 1,400 years have passed since he left this world, his legacy remains. And it is the greatest and strongest legacy in history. Our gathering here for Salatul Jumu'ah today is part of the legacy of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every time we pray, every time we recite the Qur'an, Every time we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time we give charity in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time we do any good action, this is part of the legacy of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because it is through his teachings that we know all of these things. We would not have known how to even worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly without learning it from our guide. And our teacher, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So everything good that any Muslim around the world does or has done or will do, this is all part and parcel of the legacy of the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the legacy of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Islam spreading throughout the world. This is the legacy of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So while the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was alive, of course he was very keen to make sure that he protects his reputation. Because as we mentioned, your reputation while you're alive is connected to the legacy that you leave after you die. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very keen to make sure that he protects his reputation. 
Once there was someone from the munafiqeen, from the hypocrites who was causing a lot of problems for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for the companions. And one of the companions asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for permission to execute this hypocrite, to kill this munafiq. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not give him permission and he mentioned the reason why. And it's very profound if you look at the reasoning of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while denying permission, he said, لا حتى لا يتحدث الناس أن محمدا يقتل أصحابه. He said, no, we cannot kill him because I do not want the people to say that Muhammad kills his companions. The Muslims knew that this particular person was a munafiq, he was a hypocrite. But the outside world didn't know that. A munafiq by definition is someone who pretends to be a Muslim. So the outside world would look at this person and say he's a Muslim. And if the Prophet ﷺ ordered for this person to be killed, what would the people say? Like, look, Muhammad ﷺ, he's killing other Muslims. He's killing his own people. And this is something that could harm his reputation. This is something that could, that could scare people from accepting Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ, he, he was very far-sighted. He could see all of these things. He understood how these things work. So this was one of the ways that the Prophet ﷺ protected his reputation. And he knew that it's very protecting his own reputation is protecting the reputation of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ, as the Messenger of Allah, as the Prophet of Islam, he knew that his reputation is the reputation of the religion itself. So he was very keen to make sure that he protected his reputation. And by protecting his reputation, he would also be protecting his legacy in the future as well. Another example from the Prophet ﷺ making sure to protect his reputation once. The Prophet ﷺ was walking one of his wives, Sufiya bint Huyay, back to her home in the night. The Prophet ﷺ was making i'tikaf in the masjid during the month of Ramadan. And one of his wives, Safiya radiallahu anha, came to visit him. And they talked for some time and then she got up to leave to go back to her home. So the Prophet ﷺ did not want her walking to, home, to her home you know, in the middle of the night. So he said, I will walk with you to your home. So he walked with her in the night towards her home. And while the two of them were walking, the Prophet ﷺ and his wife Safiya عنها, they were walking and two of the companions, two men from the Sahaba, they happened to be walking nearby. And they saw the Prophet wasallam and his wife and then they, they started to quickly move away. And then the Prophet wasallam stopped them. He stopped them. He said, Ala rislikuma. Let's slow down. Wait. And then he told them, Innaha Safiya bint Huyay. This woman who is with me, she is Safiya bint Huyay, the wife of the Prophet. He wanted to clarify to these, these two men that this woman that I am with, she is my wife. And then the companions, these are companions of the Prophet. They were surprised that the Prophet would even feel the need to clarify this. You are the Messenger of Allah. You don't need to explain anything to us. We know that you are pure and that you will always speak the truth and you would never do anything wrong. So they were actually even surprised that the Prophet ﷺ wanted to clarify this with them. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, Subhanallah, O Messenger of Allah, Subhanallah, how, how could we even think anything else? You don't need to explain this to us, Ya Rasulullah. Of course, we would never think anything bad about you. But then what did the Prophet ﷺ say? He said, Inna shaytana yajri min abni adama majrad dam wa inni khashitu an yaqdhifa fi qulubikuma shay'a aw sharra. The Prophet ﷺ said that the shaytan, he runs in the veins of the people. So the shaytan, he's always trying to put thoughts in the minds of people, bad thoughts about others in the minds of people. So the Prophet ﷺ said, I feared that the shaitan may put something bad in your hearts, may put some bad thought in your heart, so I wanted to clarify it. 
So this is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam making sure that he protects his reputation. Now a very important point to remember when we talk about reputation and legacy and these things, a very important point to remember is that a believer does not do good deeds to be praised by the people. This is not your intention when you're doing a good deed that you want to be praised by the people. Rather, a believer does good deeds sincerely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the good reputation that comes from that and being remembered fondly after you leave this world by the people, this is a side effect that comes as a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for doing good. So when we do good, our sincerity has to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I'm doing this to please you. And if you do something to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you many rewards. And from those rewards is that He gives you the love of the people. He gives you acceptance from the people. He gives you the dua of the people. So that's not your intention to gain those things. Your intention is to, is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get, and get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But from the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you is that He gives you a good reputation and He allows you to leave behind a good legacy as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجَعَلُوا لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانُ وُدَّا Surely those people who believe and do righteous actions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place love for these people in the hearts of others. You will gain the love of the people. Believe in Allah, do righteous actions, live a good life, bring benefit to other people by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be beloved by the people. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people of honor and the people of nobility. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to do actions that are pleasing to Him and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people who leave behind a good legacy where people will continue to pray for us after we leave this world and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people who are who are most beneficial to others the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said khairun nas anfa'uhum lin nas the best of the people are those who are most beneficial to other people so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all this quality may he allow us to leave may, may he allow us to leave this world in a good way where our benefit remains long after our bodies have left this world ameen بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بهدي سيد المرسلين أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله العظيم الجليل لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters Glorious is Allah سبحانه وتعالى who created people at different levels There are some people who are of great character and lofty standards and they aspire to bring benefit as much as possible to others and because of this they have a good reputation and they leave behind a great legacy it's like a bee who only eats from that which is good and then the honey that comes out of the bee is also good this is the likeness of a person who leaves behind a good legacy they do good in this world and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the good that they did to remain even after they leave this world. On the other hand, there are others from mankind who have darkened hearts. They don't have any types of aspirations to do good. Their actions are weak or maybe non-existent. So when they leave this world, they are forgotten. And they leave behind absolutely no legacy. When they, when they leave this world, it is as if they never existed in this world. When they leave this world, it is as if they never were in this world because there is there's no footprint that they left behind. No good, no benefit that continues that came from them after they leave this world. And that's a tragedy. 
to leave behind no legacy at all. But what's even a worse tragedy than that? That there are some people who leave behind an evil legacy, a bad legacy. And instead of bringing benefit to the people, these people while they were alive in this world, they brought harm to the people. So when these people leave this dunya, the people actually feel happy. They feel relaxed, they feel relieved. Finally, we are rid of this person. Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi, he was an oppressive ruler during the time of the Tabi'een. And he killed many of the Sahaba. He killed many of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was hated by the people for his injustice and his oppression. Once, he fell into a river and he didn't know how to swim and he was drowning and someone from the Muslims jumped in to save him. This is a person who is hated by everyone. He's drowning. The people are thinking, look, if he drowns, we're finally going to be rid of him. But then someone from the Muslims jumps in and actually saves him. So the others around him were actually upset. Why did you save him? You should have let him drown. We would have been free of him. Do you like him or something? And then what did this Muslim reply? The Muslim who saved the life of Hajjaj. He said, no, I hate him more than any of you hate him. But the reason why I saved him is because the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالْغَرِيقُ shahid." The person who dies by drowning, this person is a shaheed. He's a martyr. And I did not want him to get that honor. So that's why I saved him. Look at this type of legacy that Hajjaj ibn Yusuf left behind. That the people, they don't want good for him in this world. They don't even want good for him in the hereafter. Right? We don't want to leave behind this type of a legacy. Rather, we want to leave behind a legacy where the people will remember us with good, will make dua for us, will pray for us, will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. They will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us. And inshallah, we will see the benefit of that dua while we are in our graves and we will see the benefit of that dua on Yawm Al-Qiyamah as well. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people who do righteous actions, who do actions that are pleasing to Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people who are beneficial to others in whatever capacity we have. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and preserve our reputations in this world and to allow us to leave behind a beneficial and good legacy long after we depart this world. Ameen. هذا وصلوا وسلموا رحمكم الله على الرسول المجتبى والنبي المصطفى كما أمركم بذلك ربكم جل وعلا فقال عز من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد بن عبد الله وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم فرج هم المهمومين ونفس كرب المكروبين وقض الدين عن المدينين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا للفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة 
الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استووا استووا اعتدلوا أقيموا صفوفكم ولا تختلفوا سد الخلل الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله اللهم انت السلام عليك السلام تبارك الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد we have a few announcements إن شاء الله this Sunday July 24th, after Salat al-Maghrib, there will be a special class for women only held here at the masjid. It will be taught by Ustada Ismail Buzidi. Inshallah, she is a very well-qualified teacher, masters in Sharia, and she's going to be teaching the women a class on issues that are specially pertinent to women, women's issues like purification and cycles and these type of things. So she's going to be holding this very beneficial class, inshallah. Uh, this Sunday uh, upstairs in the classrooms inshallah Sunday after Salat al-Maghrib for women only inshallah so all of the women you know you are you are requested to join that inshallah it will be very beneficial good knowledge for you inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it beneficial for everyone also we have a few dua requests brother Muhammad Ammar who has been in the hospital for a number of weeks now he is still ill so please make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a complete and speedy recovery. Allahumma rabban nas azhi bil bas wa shfiyan tashafi la shifa illa shifa uk shifa an la yugadiru saqama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a complete and speedy recovery. Also, we have uh, Dr. Ghassan Dabbagh. He is ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a complete and speedy recovery as well. Allahumma rabban nas azhi bil bas wa shfiyan tashafi la shifa illa shifa uk shifa an la yugadiru saqama. Also, the, the mother of Brother Muhammad is ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her a complete and speedy recovery as well. Allahumma rabban nas athi bil bas wa shfi anta shafi la shifa illa shifa'uk shifa an la yugadiru saqama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give good health and a complete recovery to all of them. Ameen. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. One more dua request, Dr. Musa Sidat is also very ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a complete recovery. Allahumma rabban nas azhi bil bas wa shfi anta shafi. La shifa illa shifa uk shifa an la yugadiru saqama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a complete and speedy recovery. Ameen. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.